Amazing. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Flash in a Pan, the only show where magic happens in a pan and goes straight on your plate. Today, we're going to make chicken katsu curry, an exotic flavor from Japan. It's super quick and easy to make, so let's get started. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Flash in a Pan, the cooking show with some fazaz. And today we're going to make chicken katsu curry. Now you may be wondering, what on earth is chicken katsu curry? Well, it's kind of like how spaghetti bolognese is the most common dish in Italy. Chicken katsu curry is usually what people go for when they go to a Japanese restaurant. So let's get started. And to start off, we're gonna head out and get some of the mothers of all cooking, which is the holy onion. Um, I have two little ones, but a large one will also suffice. Uh, just gonna cut the heads off. And as you already know, I am immune to any tears. Or so I think. And thanks to some amazing producers, I also have a very sharp knife today, which is great news. Collect off. Mm. So in the last episode, as you hopefully have seen, we made some beef noodles, which was also Japanese inspired. And I would probably say Japanese food is my favorite cuisine. Um, this usually goes really well with the start of sushi. If um, you guys like some sushi and you'd like to impress some guests, I definitely recommend going ahead and getting those for starters. Right, just dice these up really nicely. It doesn't really matter how big the chunks are because we're gonna sieve the actual sauce out and this is all for the sauce. And what, we're, what we really want is just the sauce to have the essence of all of these ingredients. We're gonna sieve them out later, get all the chunks out. Our preference today is some nice breaded chicken. Right, I'm just gonna get the pan frying over here. Just dice them in. And remember, if you swish with this side with the sharp end, you might blunt the knife. So go with the back and pull. All of those in, fantastic. Next up, we're gonna get some garlic, the father of all cooking. Um, thought that would work, naturally it didn't. Um, we are gonna have around five, and again, you guys are gonna call me crazy, but as I said before, we're not actually gonna be using these as chewable ingredients. It'll mostly be just for the sauce itself. Peel the skin and pop them straight in. Now the side dish that usually accompanies uh, chicken katsu curries is rice naturally. So definitely get yourself some white rice normally and um, try and add quite a lot of water to get it, that, to give it that nice sticky feel. You don't want kind of a uh, Middle Easternish kind of rice. You want it nice and fluffy to go well with your chicken. Something that you can have with chopsticks, hopefully, if you're into that kind of thing. Surprise, surprise. Um, apples, you know, keep the doctor away and this curry hopefully will do exactly that. So let's go grab an apple, beautiful, and red. Red is usually the one I go for um, because uh, I find the green ones have, um, have a little bit more toughness, a bit more sourness to them which you don't necessarily want. You want it to give it that sweet kind of taste, that sweet flavor and aroma. Just cut the cores out very roughly. And as I said, don't really worry about aesthetic too much. Just go ahead and chuck them all in. Look at that, all the juices. Yep. I think this is pretty much the only dish where I ever use any apples. So it's quite an occasion for me, me and my sad life. Right, next up, get two carrots. One, two, amazing. And all you need to do is just make sure you cut the ends off. I know, sorry guys, sorry, you are the rejection sir, but you will come back in another form. 
very shortly. And you don't need to skin these, just go ahead and slice them through. Actually, there's a much better way of doing this, which is to slice them down the middle. Amazing. Right. Now, remember, with the back of the blade, just pour them all in. Don't worry about the skin. As I said, it would just add that extra flavor. Um, so, next up, what I need you guys to do is two tablespoons of honey. Again, just to add that sweet texture that we really want from the curry. Just add that through, one and two. And if none of you guys have tried it, I would highly recommend it. Fantastic. Now we're gonna add four teaspoons of katsu powder. Now, if you don't have katsu powder, I would highly recommend getting some garam masala as a substitute. It works out pretty well. So one, two, three, and the four. Now, just two grams of any um, general curry powder that you like. I'm using Balti curry powder. Just give two teaspoons of that. And, ah, oh, it smells fantastic already. And now you're gonna need two tablespoons of flour. Just gonna get my trusty flour somewhere. Oh. Mm. It's full. And just put that in. I know we have some Japanese viewers that are screaming at me right now for doing this so badly, but please forgive me. This is, this is not my area of expertise, but I promise you this will be delicious when it's finally done. So we bring that over to the hub. Try and drizzle around a generous portion of some kind of oil, vegetable oil. I'm using some olive oil at the moment. You can use some coconut oil. Oh, definitely try and use some coconut oil to kind of um, really give it some rich flavor. And left. Now, what I need you guys to do now is to just to get 600 milligrams of chicken stock. Um, you should find it at any supermarket, just get a cube, put it in water, boiling water preferably, and give it a good stir, and oh, look at that, amazing. And we're just gonna pour about half of that in at this moment in time. Give it a good stir, give it a stir for a couple of minutes, let it simmer. And once you have this kind of thickness going on, uh, you can see the flavors all coming together nicely. The onions are starting to soften a little bit. Uh, everything's starting to soften. Then you add the second portion. All right, so now's the time for the second helping. Pour that in. Fantastic. And I'm just gonna add uh, four dashes of soy sauce real quick. This is just for my personal flavor. You can do what you want naturally. Voila. And then just give it a good stir. It's looking a bit liquid at the moment, but as it simmers, it'll solidify. The flour will really help for things to come together. Right, and now off to our chicken. Right, now what you're gonna need for the chicken is to put three plates out like this and naturally some chicken. So let's get that. This is a and a half. Right, so I'm just gonna use this, the lean part of it. And I'm just gonna get some flour and breadcrumbs. And just put some even portions. So you want to start out with some flour over here and um, just use common sense with how much you're going to put. So I'm going to use one chicken breast. So I think that much flour should be enough. And I love my breadcrumbs ever since I was a kid. Nice and crispy. And you're going to need an egg for the middle bit. So I'm just going to grab a fork real quick. Crack it open. Oh. And just beat it on the side. So once you have this kind of thing going on, you're gonna need the other essential ingredient, which happens to be 
the chicken. So let's get that. I'm just gonna use one chicken breast, as you can see. Just dab it in flour. Voila. Beautiful. I got some egg on it. Absorb my favorite part, which is breadcrumbs. Fantastic. So breadcrumbs, you can definitely get some kids involved because kids love this sort of activity. It would be a great time. Just put loads of breadcrumbs all around. Voila, that looks pretty good to me. Right, next thing you're gonna need is a pan full of oil. So let's get that started up. Just gonna move this back, guys. Just let it simmer and bring a pan to the main stage. I'm gonna add some oil very generously. And when I say very generously, I do mean it. You're about to fry some chicken. So add as much as you want in the middle and heat it up. And I think I'm starting to see some bubbles come up and now's the time. Put the chicken through. Voila. Fantastic. Look at that. It's like a, it's like a continent, like a desert island about to be fried up. You really can't beat Japanese cuisine in terms of its aesthetic. It just looks so gorgeous. Right, we're gonna get some tongs, except our tongs are metallic and I really don't wanna scratch the wok, so I'm using two wooden spoons to flip it over nice and gently. Woo! Look at that. Phenomenality right there. Brilliant. Get that cooking, get that through. It's gonna reduce the heat. Ah, oh, can you smell that? Guys, you can, you can definitely smell that, right? Amazing. And by the way, this is all relatively healthy stuff, I think. Apples, onions, garlic, there's not really much to it. And you got some amazing chicken right here with some rice, I'd say around 500 calories. So all you people on a diet, quick, simple, easy. So now the chicken is pretty much cooked, all Kentucky. Now we're gonna get a plate. Put it here and see how things are going. Voila. Just putting it through. Voila. Wow, look at that guys. All breaded and nice. Now what we're gonna need for the curry is to actually sieve it through. So all the actual chunks are kept in somewhere else and you can kind of discard them as you wish. But what we really want is the sauce at the bottom. Look at that. Pretty good, if I may say so myself. Put it. Part where we just sieve it through, and as I said, it's not really important how well you can cut the onions or cut the carrots or anything like that. All we need now is the actual sauce, actual um, curry. So grab a ladle. And let all the sauces sift through. Should have this sort of consistency to the actual curry. So this is the kind of consistency that we're going for, as you can see in colour and in kind of liquid form, as it were. So it's not too thick, but it's not too liquid either. Just throw the rest in the bin or dispose of it as you wish. Some people may want to keep the apples. All right, now that we have the rice, thank you, mystical person. Voila. Just on the side here, I'm gonna just cut up the katsu curry and this is normally how it's presented, but naturally just do your own thing as you would Cut it through here. Oh, look at that. Mm, beautiful. Never cook on an empty stomach because it makes you salivate while cutting things, especially this type of food, which is one of my favorites. Very simple to make, as you guys saw. It can be done in less than 40 minutes. Really, really quick stuff. 
And now here's where presentation and personal style comes in. I usually like to just put it through like this, just on the sides. And now comes the sauce. Through here. Voila. Chicken katsu curry 